Hello, I'm Mayor Bill Carpenter. Over the next few months, my office will be producing a series of ESL classes that specialize in helping Brockton residents acquire English skills to increase employment opportunities. This class is called English for Employment. This represents an unprecedented partnership between the Brockton Area Workforce Investment Board, CareerWorks, the Brockton Public Schools, Brockton Community Access, and the Mayor's Office. We hope you find this series useful as we continue our mission to bring vital services to the residents of the City of Brockton. Why, is it, why are job interviews stressful things? What makes a job interview stressful? For me, uh, this was my first interview. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, I, sometimes I stop to talk, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> was it here yeah. on Haiti, Elisekiel? No, here. Here? Yes. Ah, so not only were you, did you have to talk, you had to talk in a second language, right? You had to speak in English, not even in your first language. Extra stressful. <laughs> that makes it really stressful. What other thing make, make a job interview stressful? What makes an interview a stressful thing? Right. To, to, to try uh, to get a job. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's very important because you want to make a good impression, Philomena says. You, and there's, there's a lot of stress because if you don't make a good impression, you're not going to get that job, right? Yeah. So you're thinking, oh my goodness, there's a lot, we say there's a lot riding on this. I have to make a good impression or I probably won't get this job. So now I have to speak a second language well enough to impress this person. I have to make a good impression. If I mess up, they're not going to hire me. And I, I really need a job. <laughs> what other things make a job interview stressful? Anything else that you can think of? The, why don't we say, wow, I'm, I'm so happy I have a job interview? I used to hate vocabulary. Vocabulary. <laughs> Pronunciation. Pronunciation, that's another big one. Right? What if I pronounce something wrong? Second language. It's a second language. <laughs> right. Junior? And also you want to convince the interviewer to, to, to accept you, to give you the job. Exactly. They might have 100 applicants for this job. Of course, it's a cause of stress for Yes. You have to persuade and convince this person that of all those people, you're the best one. Yeah. And how do you do that? How do you convince the employer that if they have 100 people, that you're the one, you are the number one person that they want for that job? How do you convince them? Magali, you can do that at home. Don't worry. Bring it next time, okay? There's no hurry, as long as it's by the end of the course so that we can get your resume going. What kind of things can you do to convince the employer that this company needs you? <laughs> <laughs> what can you do to... First to impression. The first impression. Yes. You give a good impression. No, first a good um, application. Absolutely. Without a good application, good application, you're never going to get in the door. Yes. So that's number one. Your clothes. Your clothes. Very important. Very important. And the interview. Absolutely. Junior? I think your, your, your experience. Your experience? Yes. So can help you to yes. have the job. You have to show the interviewer that you know you, you can do this job. You, you, can, you can assume your, your, your duty. That's your right. Abilities. Now, what happens if you don't have any experience in that job? 
what if I'm a CNA and I have a lot of experience as a CNA? Then it's going to be easy for me to describe my experience. But what if I don't have any experience in the job that I'm applying for? Then what do I do? Should I give up and say, well, I can't apply for that job? No. 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 What can I do? There's experience in part here. <coughs> because um, my, in my first interview, interview job, uh, the manager said to me, this is your first job here? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to start somewhere, right? <laughs> Now, did you have skills from other jobs that you could also use in this job? Sometimes we have skills. For example, if I'm a CNA and I've worked before as a CNA, that's, that's, that's easy to describe. Well, I've, tell me about your work experience. Well, I've had five years as a CNA at St. Joseph's Manor and before that I worked for Bayada Healthcare as a as a home health aide. But if I'm applying for the first time as a CNA, I just got my certificate and I had some training, but I've never worked as a CNA. Some, sometimes students have said, you know, nobody will hire me because I've never worked as a CNA before. You can also talk about things called transferable skills. Transferable skills. These are skills that you have from other jobs that can transfer to a new job. What kind of jobs did you do in the past? It, not, now, not only here, but also in your country. Many of you come from Haiti. What kind of jobs have you done in Haiti? You worked at a hospital? Okay. <laughs> So you had some me a medical tech. That's not a CNA, but some of those skills. You've worked in a hospital. You've worked with patients. Yes. So you can explain that. Those are transferable skills. Transferable skills. What other jobs have people had in Haiti? Everybody's, almost everybody's from Haiti. We have some people from Cape Verde. What other skills? From other jobs do we have, I'm a teacher, I've never worked as a CNA before. Oh boy, but now I want to be a CNA. I just took my CNA training at Catholic Charities and I'm ready to start working as a CNA. So I go for my interview and they say, well, why should we hire you? You've never worked as a CNA, you were a teacher in the past. Do I have any transferable skills? Ah, Ezekiel's saying yes. What are some transferable skills I might have that I could explain to the employer that would help me to get a job as a CNA? What do I do in my teacher's job that would transfer to a CNA's job? Philomena? You speak very well. You, you have a language quite well. And you can explain something. Ah, okay. So, in my teaching job, I have to explain things to people and help them to understand something new. Do CNAs have to do that? Yes. Do CNAs have to explain things to people? Yes. yes. Yeah, what do CNAs have to explain? How, how do people have to take the medicine? How to take the medicine. Sometimes CNAs work with elderly people or people who might have a little bit of dementia and you have to be very patient with them and explain step by step, patient, <laughs> step by step, first you have to do this. So that's a skill that's transferable. You have to, you have to be able to know how to do that. What if I want to be a bank teller? What if I'm applying for a job at Harbor One Credit Union, or Harbor One Bank now, they changed. But I've never worked as a bank teller before. Maybe all I did before, when I first came to this country, I had a job at Dunkin' Donuts. That was my first job. I worked at Dunkin' Donuts, but now I'm applying for a job as a bank teller. My English is a little bit better, and I'd like to be a bank teller. So I go to Harbor One and I apply for a job, and they say, well, you've never worked as a bank teller before. You're, I see your only job experience here in the United States is at Dunkin' Donuts, and it looks like you were a cashier. Do I have any transferable skills? Mm -hmm. yes. 
What are some transferable skills that I have, Ezekiel? I think so. Um, if you want a, an a good application, um, career, and and you 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 can you, you can take uh, you can take uh, the application uh, for a job for a job. I know I know first a good application. Um, you can translate, transfer more, and well, let's take a look. Uh, I was a cashier at Dunkin' Donuts. Dunk, I'm just going to abbreviate DD. And now I want to be a bank teller. That's an entry level position at Harbor One or a Crescent Credit Union or one of the other banks in town. What kind of skills do I need to be a cashier at Dunkin' Donuts? Math skills. So, what did I have to handle at Dunkin' Donuts very quickly? What did I have to do? Speeds. Has anybody here ever worked at Dunkin' Donuts? Customer service. I took care of customers. What am I going to do at the bank? Take care of customers. <laughs> so, I'm going to provide customer service. Good communication skills. I have to understand what the customer wants and I have to be able to respond to that. So good communication skills. I have to have the same thing as a bank teller, right? What else do I have to do? <coughs> what else does a bank teller do that a cashier at Dunkin' Donuts would do? Or a cashier anywhere, cashier at Macy's or a cashier at anywhere really. Polite. polite, courteous, customer, we put that under customer service. You'd have to be polite, courteous, customer service. What's the big thing that you have to do at the end of the day before you go home? If I buy coffee at Dunkin' Donuts, what do I have to give you before you give me my coffee? Money. Money. <laughs> I have to handle customers' money, right? Am I going to have to do that as a bank teller? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to have to handle the cash. I'm going to have to count it, balance the cash register. So I'm going to have to do the same thing. So some and have good math skills, good with money. So sometimes when you interview for a job that you have never worked at before, don't be discouraged. Many job application, uh, job postings will say experience preferred, but not necessary. If it says experience necessary or five years experience required, don't apply if you don't have experience. But if it says experience preferred, go for it. But you have to prepare yourself if it says preferred but not necessary. So do some homework. Sit down and do this. Put the job that you had in the past and the job that you want and think about it. Make a list like this. What did I do in my past job that I also would do if I have this new job? So when they say to you, but you've never really worked as a bank teller before, and you could say, well, but my first job in the United States was as a customer service or as a cashier at Dunkin' Donuts. I provided friendly customer service. I had good communication skills. I took orders very quickly and handed them to the customers. I balanced the cash register every day and I handled the money. And I would be doing those same things as a bank teller. So there you've just convinced them that you can do the job, even though you have never done that job before. And you can convince them that you're a, a very fast learner. In the next few weeks, we're going to talk about the questions that interviewers will ask you in a job interview. And even though you'll still be nervous, because job interviews always make people nervous, being prepared for an interview will make you less nervous. If we have an idea of what kind of questions are they going to ask me, and we have an idea of 
how, how can I answer those questions? It'll make you a little bit less nervous. But before we start, I have a little exercise I want us to do. I want you to pretend, this is a little, little uh, exercise in first impressions. I want you to pretend that you are, let's say a bank manager. You're the manager of a bank. You have an opening for a bank teller. You have to hire a bank teller for your bank. And there are five women who are coming in for an interview. I'm going to show you five women and they are coming in for an interview. You don't know anything about these women, but research says that most interviewers make their decision about whether or not you are right for the job within the first 30 seconds of the interview. 30 seconds. That's a short time. Oh. 30 seconds. So, we're going to do a little exercise. And I'm going to show you the five women. We're, we're not going to know anything about them. We're not going to look at their resumes. But I want you to decide, would you hire this woman based on the first impression? Okay, so you're the manager, you're the interviewer. Your first applicant is, this is Jane, shy. When you go to the bank, if somebody comes up and, you know, do you want those people to handle your money? <laughs> now, she might be a very skilled person. She might have good skills, right? But we don't know that. In the first 30 seconds, the first impression is that she's not very confident. Bad impression. So Ezekiel, you picked up on that. You said that this, we based that on her body language. We call that body language. You speak with your voice, but you also speak with your body. The way you keep your body. The way you keep your body, the way you present yourself. So with Jan, we decided, hmm, not a good candidate. Now see that? 30 seconds. We didn't look at her resume. We didn't, she didn't open her mouth. And everybody decided, Nope, right? There she is. She would like to apply for the job. <laughs> She's here to apply for the job as a bank teller. Magali. First impression, we don't know anything about her skills. Would she make a good bank teller? What do you think? Nobody's saying anything. <laughs> That's Raquel. So the problem is now to, to, to. So what do you think about Raquel? As a, as, a, as a big manager. She has a manager. I, I don't need a, a pop star for... for, for, for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a pop star for a bank teller. Wow, what might be the problem with hiring a pop star for a bank teller? She don't work. <laughs> she wouldn't work hard. That's the impression, huh? Yeah. yeah. The black glasses. Oh, the sunglasses? She has a <laughs> little bit of attitude, huh? She's a star. Uh, her lifestyle. So why would those things worry you as a manager? Why would it worry you if she wants to be come and work for you as a bank teller? Bless you. She's not. You think she might not work? She might want to sign autographs instead of. <laughs> uh, so maybe her attitude might not be. For me, she may have good skills, 
for the, the, the impression I have about her in the picture. Maybe she's not too serious. Ah, yeah. Good point. She may have good skills, but the, the impression that she gives. And what's giving you that impression? Is that she's not too serious, you said. Someone who's, who's searching for a job, I think she, she doesn't have to, to, to come in an interview with in a, what they call the car? Uh, a limousine. A limousine. <laughs> limousine with, with, with bodyguard, with driver. I don't think she, she, she's the good person for, for the job. Ah, okay. She looks like she doesn't really need a job, right? She's pregnant. But now remember, employ bless you, employers cannot discriminate based on pregnancy. So you can't consider the pregnancy as a problem. Would you consider hiring her? We don't know about her skills or anything. Just first impression, Junior? No, I'm not going to hire her. Why? Because I remember you told us when you go into a job interview, you don't have to bring anyone with you. True. You should come alone. Yeah, you come alone. If you have a problem in which you can, I remember you told us we can come with someone who can translate for you if you have some problem. But in this case, you don't have to bring <laughs> anyone with you. Well, but if you have a problem with the language, then you're probably not ready to apply for that job yet. <laughs> because that's right. Yeah. If you're right, if your friend is going a driver, is that right? Someone can drive you to to the to the to the interview. Right, because you can't bring that person, your translator, to work every day to sit with you. It's <laughs> and most people who come for a job interview do just fine on their own. Usually, the person who comes with you is kind of a security blanket anyway. If that person leaves. Even if you make a few grammar mistakes or you know forget a word, people understand. They respect you for. They understand that if you speak a second language, yeah, once in a while you're going to make a mistake. So don't ever bring a translator with you to a job interview. She's that's. Pregnant. She's pregnant, but that's okay. That's not a problem. That's a temporary thing. <laughs> it's temporary, but I want. I asked her. She made the baby come out after. After? Well, employers cannot discriminate based on, yeah, discrimination for that's discrimination. So employers cannot say, oh, sorry, you're pregnant, I'm not hiring you. They can't, they can't discriminate based on that. It's against the law, right? Because, you know, every woman has the possibility that you could hire somebody and they could get pregnant, you know, the next week. So you can't tell somebody, well, you're pregnant, so I'm not going to hire you. But are there other problems with her? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Because that baby's not going to be in there forever. <laughs> that baby's coming out. <laughs> and, and women still work. Women go back to work after they have babies. So the, the key there is um, the, the concern might be do you have child care, you know, reliable child care? And, and if somebody does, then that shouldn't interfere. But are there other impressions that she gives? Body language, clothing, that make you think. Now, Junior said she brought somebody with her. That's, you usually don't do that with a job interview. Anything else about her first impression that makes you think, hmm? She's not, she, she's not you dress well. And also she have a chewing gum she put in. She's blowing a bubble, right? Yeah. She's chewing gum. Never chew gum at a job interview. Never, never. So what does it make you think about her attitude about job searching for a job? What about her <laughs> attitude? You think she's serious about this job? No. 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 Oh boy, you guys are, this class is tough. <laughs> Would you hire her to be a bank teller? Too young? <laughs> shock, shock dress. Shock dress. A shocking dress? Yes. No good. <laughs> no good? A short or a short dress? She, she doesn't transmit responsibility. 
Uh, she doesn't transmit responsibility. Interesting. What makes you say that, Philomena? Interesting. What about her appearance makes you feel that about her? What, what is it that makes you think that? The style, like the whole style. Her whole style makes you think she's not responsible. A bank teller has to be very responsible. Yes. Customers have to trust the person that they yes. hand their money to. Yes. So she's not giving you that impression? Would you give this girl your money? No. no? <laughs> How about her body language? If you were her boss and you said, Cinder, would you, um, could you work overtime tomorrow? You think she'd say sure? No. Probably not, no? Probably not, why? What is her body language saying to you? You said Jan's body language says she's not confident. What does, Jan, what does Cinder's body language say? You think she's not confident? Shy? You think she's shy? No, she's not shy. She's not shy. In that picture, she's not shy. How would you describe, if you had to think of an adjective, a describing word to describe her? Rebelled. Rebelled. Rebellious, we would say in English, rebellious. Anybody here have teenagers? <laughs> My kids are in college now, but I, I remember that face. <laughs> you say defiant, maybe? So Cinder, no? No? Uh-oh. She would like to apply for the position of bank teller. Oh, I see some heads going okay this time. <laughs> maybe yes. Tell me why. What things about this picture? The way, the way she is. She combs. Oh, she combs her hair. Maybe, maybe. Even though I didn't see all her body, I think she, she, she dressed well too. Okay, yeah, she has a conservative, looks like business like clothes. We... How about her makeup? And her smile. Her smile. And in, in, her, in, her, in her face, I can imagine, I can guess she's a serious person. A serious person. Confident. Confident. Looks like maybe eye contact. Uh, yeah, eye contact. Responsible. Uh, she can assume her duties. She could assume her duties. So you could picture her taking money, giving customer service at the bank. Yes. Okay, but not those four. No, 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 no. All right. So now I'm going to tell you a little secret. <laughs> can you guess the secret? Maybe she's not. The secret is that Jan and Ra Raquel and Jesse and Cinder, they're all the same person. <laughs> <laughs> and who controls, who controls your first impression? Who's in control of you, your first impression? Who decides? You. You. You, you're in control of the first impression that you make. So spend a lot of time before you, um, before you go for your interview, think about what am I going to wear? What, how am I going to you know, practice? Stand. How am I going to stand? Practice interviewing. We're going to do that here in class. We're going to be watching videos of people interviewing and we're going to practice interviewing with each other so that we feel comfortable. We're going to practice asking and answering Questions. Some of the questions will be easy, some of the questions might be a little uncomfortable. But the more we practice and the more confidently we answer, the more prepared you are, the better the impression will be.